with so many computers around, everybody needs some place to put them, some place to work on. So I'm going to show you how to make these real nice counters like this. Just a laminate counter with a nice wood edge, which is very easy on your arms. Here's one. Here you can see up here on a. This is actually a commercial one in our church, but you can have one in your home just the same. What I want to show you now is how to make a nice laminate top, a countertop or a tabletop and with the wood edge. Now the wood edge is inch and three, uh, inch and a half wide here and it's about three quarters thick. And I want to put that right on the edge on three, three sides here because the back is going up against the wall and you don't need anything there. So I'll take these and glue them, glue them up and uh, put them on on here and I'll put the laminate top on there. So I'm going to, right now I'm just going to uh, put some glue on these and nail them into here. Now here I'm using a piece of three quarters plywood. I just happen to have that. Normally if I was making this for a larger counter for a kitchen or something like that, I would use regular particle board which is normally what they do. I'm going to show you before I glue them, this would be the bottom side here. So I've got that round it off around here so when you get to the bottom of your countertop it's nice and rounded off on top this would be rounded with a router after the laminate top is put on you now you can see i've got the edges on there so you're inching up on there and now i'm going to cut a piece of laminate to fit on there but i don't want to come all the way to the edge i want to stay back about a quarter and not quite a quarter of an inch on all the way around there because it can be routed off like this and so I'm gonna, so I'll end up with a piece here 16 and a quarter 16 3 8 by by 29 and a half now I find the best way to cut laminate is of course on a table saw so when you're cutting it you gotta go through and kind of hold this end up like that so that it doesn't go down. Sometimes it depends on what kind of rip fence you have it. It can slide underneath there. So you got to be careful it doesn't slide underneath there. So I'm going to shut the camera off and go ahead and cut it. So now I'm going to put the adhesive on there. What I use, I know it's called H2O, which of course means water. So it's a water base. There's no odors to it. And it brushes on almost like paint. Some, some of the old glues, they had to put a roller on there and you couldn't go back over yourself. But here you can paint it all back and forth and back and forth till you get a nice layer on it. As you can see, it's just like putting paint on it. It's real thin like this. There's no absolutely no odors to it. You just put a coat on so it's pretty well covered. You don't have to get it real thick. But if you see it's a little bit thin someplace, you can always go back over it real easy. And when you get it all done, then you gotta leave it set. Oh, it takes about a oh, 20 minutes to a half hour to set up, depending on the temperature and the moisture content in the air. One of the best things I like about having a wood frame around here, it's so versatile. You can use a hundred different kinds of wood. You use plain wood and paint it. You're un unlimited as to what kind of surface you can put on it. And it, yet it's nice and strong and solid. You get a Formica edge on here, so you got a real sharp corner on there indent it a little bit it breaks off here the wood can stand an awful lot of beating and pounding now the best way i found to put the laminate onto the subsurface here is to use clear plastic I lay the plastic down here like this some of them say just use little sticks in there well if you put the sticks in there you're setting up high you can't see exactly where you are this way you watch if i put the laminate down here I can slide it around, don't worry about anything, and get it exactly where I want it to go. Because it's laying right down on it where it's going to end up, right on tight. Check all the edges here real nice like that, all the way around. Take a couple of clamps back here. Clamp on there, clamp over here. 
Now it's nice and tight down. Nothing going to move. Lift this up. Take the plastic back. Side back as far as you can go. Holding it down right here so you can't make a bubble in there. And then just simply push it down. Take the clamps off. Is this enough? Plastic out. Lay this down here. Real easy, neat, and fast. And you take a roller. You have several different rollers. I have this one here I got years ago. I don't know where it is, but it's real nice because you can put a lot of pressure on it. You need a lot of pressure. You don't need a pressure for a long time on it. Just instant pressure. Just to roll everything down tight down there. With the two handles on here, you get about three or four times as much pressure you can with just one handle. And if you don't have a roller like that, you can just take a hammer and a fairly nice block of wood. wood here and then just and you get a lot of pressure that way. Now I'm using just a 45 degree router on here, router bit. You can use different configurations on it, you can use a rounded one or a little figure, but I use this one here. see a nice rounded 45 on there and I'll take them round the corners off here with a, with a belt with a drum belt sander then I just take my belt sander and I'll go around and do the other side now. Now sometimes these corners are a lot of sandy to do like any other ones. You can take a little saw like this and just cut off the corner. Of now when you get 
all done here. You got such a nice edge there. It's nothing sharp. The corners here are all, all right. this is a desktop and you're always leaning on on there. This way your elbows, your arms don't get sore on a real sharp edge there. So that's it. Now you can go ahead. For more information, go to my website, completeguidetowoodworking.com.